Hey there, everybody. It's Fred Thomas, and you're watching Rideable TV, the YouTube channel for frame and wheel, 80 bikes, and all things bike. And I thought I'd show you how to pack a tandem bike. Um, we get tandem bikes in, and um, we ship them, and we get them sold. Um, that's why, because we ship. We don't do local pickup. And uh, once you know how to pack a tandem bike, it's really not that difficult. You just have to have um, two bike boxes, uh, some tape and um and that's really it some some time and patience and uh so if you're watching this you uh you are thinking about t packing a tandem so uh let me show you how we do it um we got two bike boxes uh, we get these from uline but you can get them from home depot um any place like that and um they're standard size so they're 54 by eight by 28 and um, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty well made, you know, they're good material, strong material. They're not lightweight. Some of them are much lightweight, more lightweight than others. Um, it's best to get a new bike, a new bike box if you're going to be shipping something big like this. If you get it from a bike shop, it's going to be oversized or it's going to be used once or twice. Um, this is a better way to go. So we tape them up, one over the end, tape both up. This tandem here weighs about 40 pounds, so we're going to tape up the bottom of the box like this. Give it plenty of strength uh, because this bike is most likely going to go on a, on a conveyor belt, although if you ride, um, if you ride fragile and heavy on the box, uh, there is a chance that, that it's actually going to be moved by a, um, you know, hand moved by an individual rather than just sent to the conveyor belt. Okay, so there's one. Let's tape up the other one. Yeah, much better. All right. And then, nice and snug. And, and, back. Okay, so now you got two bike boxes. Tandems are going to be oversized no matter what you do. Sorry about that. Um, they're just big. And uh, the length of the, the tandem, once you get into a box, it's going to be about 85, 85 inches long. So we got plenty of what we're going to do, basically. Adjust. We're going to cut off the ends of. Um, we're not going to. I'll show you what we're going to do. But we're going to just cut this end off of this box and this end off of this box and just insert. You know, overlap them like this. And it requires a little bit of adjustment. Um, but I'll show you how to do that. But that means that we'll have a box that's 85 or 83 inches long or so, and um, that's enough to accommodate um, the tandem. Right, so first thing, your exacto or not exacto um, cardboard box cutter, you know, sharp blades, but that. So we're just we're just cutting out this last panel here. Yeah. 
And then just cut the tape out. Hang on to the extra cardboard. It's useful for uh, Packing material, and then what we do, we take some tape, do that, make sure the bottom panel stay connected to each other. So there you go, you got a box without a handy panel on Do the same thing with this one. Second box with the open panel. Is that right? Set it up next to the next to the bike, so you got a sense of where the end is. Ha! Uh -huh. It's got to let the air out of the wheels. It creates a lot of space. that line it up with the end. Now we'll take this box and see what we're doing here. We're just inserting this one into there. And now we're gonna take the front wheel off the um, off of this uh, to get a, a true indication of how long watch out how long the box needs to be. He's gonna might let's see here. Come on. Oh, wait, let's see, we gotta turn the brake off. That's right. Get off. Come on. There you go. Out you go. Alright. Stay put. Let the air out. I don't mean to let the air out of your tires, but in this case, I really actually do. <sighs> All right, look at this. This bike, this tandem's got 26 inch wheels running um, cyclocross tires. Um, pretty cool. All right, we'll put this one aside. Right, and um, what we will do is. Um, we're going to take the handlebars off of the tandem because uh, it allows us to turn the fork completely around. I'm not sure you, you can see that. I'll see what I mean once I take it off. And that creates more space. So let's do that. I mean, this has got a, this has got a, maybe we'll, look at this. This has got a, I'm not sure what kind of stem that is or, Something from the 1990s. Okay. I think I'm going to take the whole stem off. Yeah, that's usually the right way to go. Because um, this, look at this, look at this. Um, you can't quite see it. Uh, it's an old school uh, stem. You can't, you can't take the plate off and, uh, to get at the bars. You have to take the whole stem off of the uh, steer tube here in hopes. That's why uh, it's always good to pack these things long before anybody buys them so uh, you're, you're not 
sort of trying to pack the thing up to make the truck and, and suddenly you realize that you don't have the right tool to get the thing apart. Oink. All right, so took the fork off, or the stem off the steer tube, and you see how much more space that creates that allows us to um, flip the fork around. We're going to do that very carefully. We don't want the... Uh, the metal caliper arms to bang it too much against the uh, the frame, but I'll show you how we take care of that. Alrighty, so maybe I'll just have to take care of that right now. What do you do that? How about that? All right, look, I turned the brake on. Is that gonna work? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Turn the brake on, and now you can see we're able to reverse the fork, and that creates solid three or four inches of extra space. And then you will be able to put the fork like this. So rule of thumb is always try and make the, the, the box as small as possible. In this case, you know, it's so oversized. It's in category three oversized. It doesn't matter whether you take four inches off the, whether it's 85 inches long or 82 inches long, it's still wildly oversized. Um, but uh, it's, it's good practice. It does save a little money. And that's the way we are rewarded um, by the shipping companies, is by packing efficiently. See? So I leave a little, you know, you want to have some daylight between the end of the, of the, the bike and the end of the box. Um, you don't want to jam right up there. Okay, so yeah, we got some space there. Space. Make it a little smaller. Okay. Yeah. All right. That looks pretty good. Easy. Okay. So. There we go. That's. That's looking like the length of our bike that box. This is a medium Santana, I think. Yeah, it's a medium. But uh, it's uh, running 26 inch wheels, so it's going to fit into the box uh, quite easily. Um, right, so then the next thing is um, you want to cut down the top of the inside box so that the flaps of the outside box can effectively and efficiently and securely fit over the top of the inside box. So I'll just show you what I mean. And um, see, we're just going to cut a little bit of space there, a little bit of the edge off. And um, that will have the desired effect. Okay. So I get a pen, a small pen, like this. You see what I'm doing? I'm making it right here. There we go. So that's the end. So we're going to cut this whole section off. This whole area is going to get cut off. And let me do it on the other side. Off camera. Okay, let's do some lighting here. Thank you. All right. Things you live in, you learn in kindergarten, you never forget. All right. Just do this. 
this right cut first. Okay. All right. We cut down to this line here. You see what's going on? Yeah. Well, any questions you can ask me later. Okay, so now we cut very easily here. Just doing a, a gentle first cut through and then we'll do another one and that'll get us through the cardboard. Come on. Now this can fit snugly over the edge and it provides additional um, support. All right, I'm going to go around the camera, around the bike, and cut from this end. I'm right handed, so this makes it a little more tricky. Let me, maybe I can do it. cardboard for later but you see so that's what we've achieved you can check to make sure that you see you want the you want this edge here you want this edge to be just a little bit below the seam so that it can fold over so maybe I could make that a little bit shorter but you know I be all right. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. You can just pound it down a little bit. Anyway, so now you've got the box almost like that. Boom, you see? There it is. Now we just gotta make sure that the inside box stays in the outside box. And you know, you can, um, you know, you, you just use tape. You can put some glue in there. If you got a lot of Elmer's glue lying around, you can put that in there or old bike tube glue. I've used that before. Um, let's see here. Do I have any? Yeah, actually I do. This is old continental bike glue. Just reinforces it a little bit. I still ride tubulars. I got lots of glue, so I'm going to, I'm going to use this. Um, I ride tubulars, but I, I, you know, I'm in the process of migrating to whatever the next one is, latex, tubeless. Pick your poison, latex or glue. Um, and then I'll put a little... You know, actually, what I'm going to do is mark this so I know where to put it. Let me see. Yeah, I drew a line so I know where to move the inside box back to. And then I just put some black bike glue in there. Yeah, not the most efficient use. I should get that. I should get Elmer, Elmer's glue, a big tub of that. This will do. There you go. So it provides a little adhesive. And we put it there, line it up, 
to keep it in place a little bit more initially. And then, right, then we get out the tape. This is actually going to be more effective. Three inch packing tape. Once here, get it, hold it in place. Like that. Go around my side to get better leverage. Can do that. Place. Then you go back and tape all the places where the two boards, or the two boxes meet. So on the bottom here, and also on the inside here, where this the inner box meets the outer box, there's a seam here. You tape it. Keeps it in place, and then one vertically. Feel the teeth of the spike right in the small of my back, ready to strike. So I'm just going to be careful. Take one horizontal. Come on. Side. I'll show you once we're done. So you can see, maybe you can see what I did in there. Hold, let me see. And then all the way at the bottom. Can you see? Uh, there you go. Tape the bottom. And what I'm going to do now while the box is empty, is I'm just going to flip it over and tape the bottom. So that it is firmly in place. There you go. See here? And we're going to tape the outside too. I didn't tape the outside, but I'm going to do that next. This is what I mean. This part needs to be taped too. Doing 
this part is going to be towards the front. I don't know how I did that. Flip it over again. Okay, here we go. There's our box. Let's see how long it is. I think it is long enough. Ooh, 78 inches. That's because I think this is a pretty small, small bike. Um, I suppose if you found out that uh, you'd made the box too small, you could always undo all that work and just move up the inside box out a little bit more. And then if there's any space, you, uh, you cover it up with your extra cardboard. So now we can do, um, so now you got your box length set up. Then the thing to do is to uh, do a, a trial run to see what you got for space. So that just means taking it off of the stand. Urgh, this thing's heavy. Urgh. Yeah, okay, so. So we got, we got enough space there. Um, right, we're in good shape. So the next thing is to do some mummification or packing. And uh, a couple tips there worth mentioning. Um, Um, let's see how you can't see the front of the bike, I guess. That's good enough. All right, get it. Well, anyway, yeah, okay, that's the best I can do with the camera, I think. Um, what we're going to do is wrap every, um, bit of metal that we've got on the, on the handlebars so that they don't bang around whatsoever against the frame. Styrofoam tubes are great. These are the things that any new bike comes with. We get all sorts of inbound shipping and we just reuse all the, the shipping that we, all the packing that we, that comes in. Yeah, it's great. It really saves a lot. And uh, I'm buying a lot of stuff here. It's costly, as I always say. Adds up, adds up quick. All right, so you get that on there. The other great piece of thing to use is this industrial strength. Um, Plastic wrap, it's like saran wrap, but for products. And uh, you've got the three inch roller version, it's all the best because it's very maneuverable. And you can wrap up something like this. You put the wrapping on and then you use the, you put the, the foam on and then use the wrapping and that really holds it into place. And sometimes the, the, the tape that you use will come undone. All right, so here. This I'm gonna pack the um, I'm gonna wrap these levers. Those metal levers are like teeth. Once you leave them in a box, there's that. I'm gonna wrap the far ends. And my scissors. That. You don't really have to wrap the tape, I don't think, because uh, that's not going to scratch all this stuff. Um, let me give these guys a little saran wrap. Keep things in place. All right, like this. 
And you know these techniques you can use on a regular bike, any bike. The only thing that's different really with a tandem bike is just cutting up the box or creating a, a new box from uh, existing boxes. So let's see, and then the other thing we do, we take these. You know, you've got a great big slab of bubble wrap like this. Um, it may seem like a lot of work, but really it just it isn't it results in a better packing job. You cut them into two inch strips or three inch strips and you know, wrap, you can't quite see that. Wrap everything. Here's the, uh, the other handlebar, the other brake lever. Wrapping that, pretty easy to do. Um, tape it and then we'll wrap the back. And uh, yeah, something like this. This was originally a, uh, what was it? It was a bubble wrap thing for a fork and you hang on to it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to use that the next time I, I have to ship a fork. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It'll be perfect. And of course, you never ship a fork or a fork comes and you forget you have this. So it's better just to Instead of saving it, we're trying to address it, you know, reserve it for something in the future. Just repurpose it right away. And uh, you know, when that fork does come in, you'll, you'll have something to pack it. That's why we don't save boxes. You know, if I saved every box that came in thinking I was going to use it, I'd have to get another building. So we got our own boxes. We got our own way of shipping things. We don't need to use someone else's boxes and um and uh that's the way it is okay i just this lever is still showing you can't have that see let's see what can we use look this lever is still sticking out a little bit Okay. Got it. All right. There we go. All right. So these levers are in good shape, and um, and you know the reason I don't know if I mentioned it, but the reason we're taking off the bars is is to do this with the front fork. But also, once the bars are are off the bike, you, you know, there, there are more ways to sort of fit them into place like this, which is extremely efficient. You do the bar is sitting on the top tube, and, and it, it's nice and snug. Now, um, this bike has got uh, cantilever brakes on it, so there's a chance that the metal will swing around and hit the down tube and scratch it. Um, if you had a disc brake, you wouldn't have that problem, but this is the way these are set up. So we're going to mummify that section so that it doesn't scratch the down tube. King Tut would be jealous. That's what I always say to myself. So do this. King Tut would be jealous, but your customer is going to be pretty relieved. I always do that. Let's see, how can I take that into place? Okay. And I'll do some. Get one little piece of in there. All right, so I always and manage to fold it so that the crease is on the least difficult part to reach, but that's okay. Yeah. That'll hold it in place and maybe I'll get some tape in there, some plastic tape in there eventually. I'm gonna do the bosses too, those are available or sticking out. So one way to take care of that is wrap it like this.
wrap each individual boss rather than trying to get tape to go around the whole fork. And that way you can uh, double it up and save on the stuff to double, double it up like that. Mm. All right, that's in place. Okay. Right, so next step is to wrap the uh, frame. And um, you know, that you might think that's sort of time consuming and all that. Um, it is, but it really isn't that bad if you do it like this. And especially if it's, if, if you've sold a, a bike like this and it's, you know, a thousand bucks, two thousand um, bucks, it's, you know, you don't want the thing to get damaged in shipping because then it just means a return, which for something like this is very complicated. You know, such an oversized thing, either a return or either a dispute, or you get into this thing where somebody said, Oh, well, you got to pay me 20 bucks because of the damage. And you actually, you, you know, you don't have to do that. You can if you want, but if you, you know, if you, if you pack it properly and take the time right now just to make sure that there's. minimal direct contact between all the metal parts, then you're just not going to have that problem. And you will also demonstrate to the customer that you, uh, that you made an effort, that you um, did everything in good faith and due diligence. And because um, if you just chuck it in there and it comes spilling out in pieces and the box is damaged, you know, the, the, the customer is going to be looking for looking for damage, and um, and maybe they'll spot something that was already there and say, "Hey, that's your fault." So we've learned from bitter experience that that uh, time spent packing carefully at the beginning is time and effort and money saved for the down the road. Now, of course, of course, if you are watching this and you don't want to do it, we are standing by to do this work for you. Um, that's, uh, you know, we pack a lot of bikes. And, um, and we pack a lot of tendons. We pack, and uh, this is, you know, this is, I'm showing you what we learned because uh, you can do it too, but. You know, you may have, I'm sure, certain you've got better things to do and that you're better at other things. But if you've watched the video this far, it suggests that, that you really do not have that much to do at the moment. And um, we want to learn, and um, that's great. We're happy to help. Um, all right, so let's get some bubble wrap around the head tube. And there's two tubes there. And then I'll show you what we do with the steer tube. That's important. You got to put a little bit more than a bubble wrap. Right. All right, this um, requires a little bit of extra packing. Um, and that's because sometimes the bike box gets flipped upside down um, and the whole thing travels on its head. Um, so it's worth um, packing the, uh, uh -oh, somebody calling me on the phone. Who could that be? Fred Thomas speaking. Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, is that... Yeah, yeah, of course, Brian. Yeah, where are you? One thirty. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that's fine. I'll um I'll be there. I'll see you at one thirty. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Bye, bye, bye. 
All righty, that's uh, the shipping guy. Um, I gotta go meet him at 1.30. Um, but um, I'll show you this one last thing and, um, and then I will leave it at that because the rest of it is um, the same as the techniques that you can see in the other video about packing the time trial bike. Um, the main feature of this video is, is the box. But anyway, for a steer tube like this, get some foam, pack it around like that. And then maybe uh, one over the top. to the fork because I know they will fit snug as a bug in a rug. That was actually that's Brian from Volk packaging. They they make our boxes. We get some boxes from Uline but Volk is the local box manufacturer and um and they um they make a lot of our boxes it's very cool maybe i got time to show you this this last thing on the wheel um take the skewer out come on get them baggy all right baggy for the small parts um for the wheel the wheel is gonna slip right in there and um you definitely want to make sure that that uh there's no contact between the wheel and <clears throat> the bike and, and that you've got some additional protection to prevent the uh the hub, the end of the hub, poking through the side of the box. Because once that happens, the, uh, the hub is going to get damaged, and there's going to be a rip in the side of the box, and that can get bigger. Um, you need to get one more. All that stuff that comes out of bikes, it may strike through, it may look round and circular, but you can flatten it out and it becomes rectangular. And so that's that and this, and then those slabs of cardboard that we created by cutting down the box. This is how we use them. You see? One way to use it. Let's do this over here. Now, you see, like that. Okay, it's a little long. Cut them out, cut them down a bit. We need a third one in there. Okay. Yeah. No cardboard left behind. So it's a little long. Cardboard is always around somewhere, and you can shape it into all sorts of things. It helps to have a sharp box cutter, which I usually have. All right. This. And okay, so that's the length. And we're 
all we're doing here is just insulating the wheel from, it's a divider, you know, we're just insulating the wheel from, from the bike and side of the box. So I use this stuff, use one to sort of hold everything in place, and there's another to really fix it in place. There you go. And then I'll take one of these and just put it on the side. Extra protection just to make doubly sure that the hub doesn't pop through the side of the box. Okay. So there you go. That's going to slide in right here. This side facing the frame. And, um, and that will, will be that. Um, really, I guess, a way to wrap this up. I mean, it's almost 45 minutes. I'll just finish it off so you can see how it all ends. All right, take the seat post out. We'll pack that separately. Wow. Let's see. Um, this one comes out too. I think it comes out. And there you go. This is a shock absorber, it looks like. Wow. That's a lot of seat posts. So that's pretty standard on tandems. They have long seat posts in the stoker position, so you can accommodate someone who's tall or large. Okay, so you, I won't do it for you, but I will, I will wrap all the tubes. I might put some uh, wrapping around the rear derailleur. And, um, and once that is all done, I will drop it in. So I'm going to do that anyway right now. So you see how this exciting video ends. <clears throat> Stay there. Drop. Drop, drop. Just really carefully. Uh oh. I have been outsmarted by my own. Yeah, you see, that's sometimes why you don't connect things until. I thought I could get away with that, but no. You can sometimes take the, the tube, or the, you know, the bars to the. to the fork or, or to the, um, the frame, but it reduces flexibility in, um, and that is what you want because getting things in to the bike and the box Sometimes it still requires a little repositioning. And uh, that's what we need here. Yeah, okay. One, two, So we got that in. Put one more tape around there. There you go. This will slide in on the side.
And there you are, there you have it. Close it up. This. Snug. Take it up from there. You see? Alrighty. That is a look at how to pack a tandem bike. If you don't want to do it, we're standing by to help you do it. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.